Badger fans, what's going on? Welcome to Locked On Badgers. We have a lot to talk about. Some some myths I think Luke Fickle has already smashed open. A couple tight ends committed. And we're going to talk about why does nobody want to talk about the great stuff that happened in the Paul Christ era? I'm going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. Let's go on Wisconsin. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to Locked On Badgers, your team every single day. I'm your host, Ryan Herrings, as always. Uh, today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel is the official sports book of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. Um, let's go. I appreciate everybody tuning in. This is kind of an impromptu one. We're bringing on a, a fun guest, a guest I would call him from the past, um, a big part of my life, John Schutz. What's going on, my friend? The, the co-host of the Bucky cast. Well, number one, you said my last name wrong. But Dang number two, you always get it wrong. <laughs> I I love how you said I'm from the past. Like, look at look at the fossil we dragged out. Oh, absolutely, that guy. Absolutely. Uh, how's it going, man? It's been a while. It has been a while. Not your first time on the show, but it has been yeah. a, a minute. Awkward pause. Awkward pause. So we're, we're good for that. We are that we used to do a show. Obviously, Justin was on that show as well. Justin comes on the show. Um, I wanted to start here, John. Thanks for jumping on. This was just kind of an impromptu show. I want to start here with I think there's some myths that Luke Fickle has busted open. And go ahead and tell me if you think I'm crazy on these or agree or if you have something that you want to throw in on here. Are right, you ready? Okay. okay. I think the first one he's he's kind of busted open is this idea that you can't talk about lofty goals at Wisconsin, right? If we had never talked about we want to win a national title. We had never, in my opinion, really had that even as a goal. Even in our tunnel, it's like the, the path to the Rose Bowl or the Big Ten Conference. I don't think Paul Chris talked about it enough. I don't think fans talked about it enough. He's come in and he said, listen, Phil Longo said it. We're going to win a title. That's our goal. You know, Freddie Collins has said the same thing. I think they've raised at least – I don't want to say they've raised the ceiling because we haven't seen any games play, but I think they've raised the expectations. See, this is this is the issue I have because we're we're essentially what two months in now, two and a half, a little more, a little more than two months into the Luke Fickle era, and people are already going, "Oh my God, he's busted all these myths at Wisconsin." We don't know that he's done anything. What he has done is brought a level of energy to the program that wasn't there before, uh, and that to me is like you know, I I don't I don't know that. Um, saying we're going to win a national championship is busting a myth. I think because Paul Chris didn't talk a lot about his team's goals, uh, he mostly just talked about the players and their effort levels. He appreciated uh, it. That was exactly. So we never heard, hey, we're going to the Rose Bowl. We're going to a Big Ten title. We're going to try and get to the college football playoff. That wasn't Paul Christ's way. That is Luke Fickle's way, and that's his coaching staff's way. So it's not so much a myth, I think, that's been busted as it is a goal that's been more enunciated. That's a, that, I mean, that's a good way to put it. I, I The myth is maybe my the, the first segment theme is kind of myth, but maybe this one is more like in the past. It's just it, the myth is Wisconsin doesn't can't get themselves to that that idea that we would even think about it. I, I feel like if you really got Paul Christ in a room with a couple beers and you talked about him and you said, what is your real goal? I don't think national title comes up with Paul Christ. Now, that's only my opinion. If, if you get a couple beers into Paul Christ, God only knows what he would say. Um, so true. <laughs> uh, Paul Christ uh, is, is well known for saying things completely differently when he's not in front of the press and cameras than when he is in front of the press and cameras. Um, Luke Fickle's a different kind of coach. Uh, Luke Fickle is very much into I, i'm not going to say flash he's not that's not necessarily true but but a sort of bold energy you know that wisconsin's program just frankly had lacked for mm -hmm. years and years there wasn't a lot uh when you went to badger events there was not a ton of uh hoopla around them it was just you know the coaches were there they said what they said they did what they did and that's pretty much it so um, we're seeing a lot more bold talk from this coaching staff. 
And that's, that's maybe the biggest thing that's different is no Wisconsin is people saying Wisconsin can't have that swagger. You know, they can't have that bold talk. Well, that is a myth that's been busted by the staff, but now they're going to have to back it up with actions Mm -hmm. and we're going to have to wait, you know, many, many months before that happens. But it's going to be a long summer, John. It's going to be a really long summer, which is why everyone should listen to podcasts and and our, our, our updates as they, as they leak through. That is very true. That's a great self plug. Uh, John, I want to give you another myth here, and then I, I definitely want to talk about uh, your show and what you guys have been doing as well. Got on YouTube finally, which I think is awesome. Plug that. Um, I think here's the other myth. There there was a myth that you can't really recruit elite passing skill talent to Wisconsin. And people will point to, well, Paul Chris did it with Graham Mertz. To me, Graham Mertz is more the anomaly than the norm. Luke Fickle has brought in Evers, Locke. Um, Met hour in 24, obviously Mordecai plus CJ Williams, Bryson Green, um, two two stud tight ends. I think he's busted that myth wide open as well. But let me know if you think I'm right or wrong on that one. Well, it helps when you bring in an offensive coordinator like uh, Phil Longo and a wide receivers coach like Mike Brown. Um, that is something that Wisconsin did not have previously. Um, no offense to Bobby Ingram, but Bobby Ingram was a first time offensive coordinator. And, um, you know, he, I don't know that he had a full game plan developed yet. You could see the hints. I mean, he was recruiting, they were recruiting Metower before Luke Fickle and Phil Longo came along. Uh, you know, they obviously were going to go after a transfer quarterback, but you know, that's neither here nor there now. Uh, so I, I don't know that it's a myth that's been busted. It never got a chance to become a myth, mainly because uh, the offense was completely changed, and we don't know how much Bobby Ingram wanted to change it once Paul Crist was no longer the head coach. I will say Paul Crist, by the end, had become very, very conservative, and there was no way on God's green earth that a, a four-star quarterback was going to um, embrace that sort of system. So uh, in that respect, yes, it, it's true. But you know, there's this. We're we're in a different. We're in a totally different quantum realm right now, in terms of like in terms of coaching staff, offensive philosophy, um, general philosophy towards football. It's just it's all different. So myths being busted. I I I just I don't know any myths have been busted yet. Come back in a year, and we may be talking about how myths were busted, but. At this point, like I said, two months in, I'm not comfortable saying that any myths have been ruptured. It's certainly been exciting. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, maybe just recruiting can be exciting at Wisconsin is almost its own kind of little myth that's been busted open. I don't know. I I think I I kind of think that it the the idea went bigger than Paul Christ. People talked about how difficult it would be to get elite quarterbacks and receivers at Wisconsin to pull that talent in, and I think it was almost a because that predates. That, that predates well, a little bit of Paul Christ. It predates Paul Christ. Hell, it, it goes back to Barry Alvarez. Well, BA uh, got the recruits at receiver for sure. Well, he got recruits at receiver, but we're talking like way in the way in the distant past. We're talking 20 right. years ago. Um, outside of Nick Toon, uh, can you name me any elite wide receiver recruits that Wisconsin pulled in who turned out to be anything? Do you count Quintus Cephas? Uh, he wasn't an elite recruit. He was a sleeper. Craig Appleton was here for all the 10 minutes before he got himself kicked off the team. Yeah, I did. That's been it. Um, so we're, we have yet to see if these new wide receiver recruits are going to blossom uh, at Wisconsin. I'm fairly confident that uh, Bryson Green will because he showed the, the skill level at Oklahoma State. We don't know about C.J. Williams yet. We don't know about the wide receivers who came from Cincinnati. We don't know about Tretch Kekahuna yet. We just don't know. No, that's a fair point. Listen, that's a very fair point. I've said uh, several times that, you know, all, all we're in it, we're still in the honeymoon phase, right? Now, mm-hmm. Luke Fickle has won the honeymoon phase. I think that's fair to say. He's won the honeymoon phase. But there's a long ways to go in the relationship here. Um, is there anything else on your side that you can think of that anything you said Luke Fickle hasn't come in, in, in your opinion, busted any myths? Is there anything he's come in and done? Um that's maybe 
I don't want to say surprised you, but it, it's gotten you to a, sp- a spot where you're looking at this hire differently from when it was first made. Uh, when it was first made, I think everyone was in shock. So I, <laughs> there's there, uh, it just it just went on from there. I mean, every time I've I've gotten grumpy about you know it's been a week and we haven't heard anything from Fickle. What's going on? You know, with the coaching staff with transfer portal. All of a sudden, you know, it's like someone unkinked a hose and all these coaching hires flood out or all these transfer portal ad- additions flood out. So uh, Luke Fickle has certainly raised the excitement level amongst Badger fans. Um, hardcore Badger fans um, are, are really excited. Um, the ca- Even the casual fan, though, I'm sure has noticed that there's a lot more there's a lot more talk around the program. We're going to take a quick break here, come back with comments, talk about what John's doing on the Bucky cast. Uh, we got a bunch of comments both on the live chat and in YouTube we're going to get to next on Lockdown Badgers. Plus, talk a little bit about your favorite moments of the Paul Christ era and why nobody really wants to talk about that or acknowledge it. It's weird. We're going to talk about that next on Lockdown Badgers. But first, today's show is brought to you by our friends over from FanDuel. FanDuel is, again, our number one um, sponsor of the show our number one sports book in the country. There's a reason that we use them. Um, and this year with the Super Bowl coming up, FanDuel is America's number one sports book. We're really excited about our new sports betting partner. Um, and again, if you haven't used them before, that's amazing. It's awesome. It's a great way to get started. Uh, download FanDuel now so you can bet Super Bowl 57 with a no sweat first bet. You'll get up to $3,000, 3K in back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win, guaranteed. FanDuel lets you bet on everything from the money line to point spreads to who will score the touchdown. I've talked about it. If we're want to, if you want to get a little hype on this, if you really believe in Luke Fickle, you believe in Tanner Mordecai, Wisconsin's plus ten thousand to win the Natty next year. Put like five bucks on it. See what happens. Um, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, and best of all, your winnings get paid instantly. Um, super easy to use. The the interface is incredibly simple to get set up and get started right away. Join FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash locked on to claim your no sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sports book partner of the NFL. All right, we're going to get back into this. A bunch of your comments. Uh, get John back on the show. Um, John, welcome. Oh, hold on. Let me. There you are. John. Hi, take, I'm here. John is here. Oh, I want you to take a second. Talk about. Um, the Bucky cast, what you guys are doing. And I think you guys fill a unique niche in like this Badger uh, podcast community. So definitely take a second and talk about that. Well, uh, the Bucky cast originally started was just strictly focused on football and uh, men's basketball, almost exclusively a little bit of men's hockey leaked in there. Uh, We've tried to diversify since then, Uh, especially talking about women's athletics at Wisconsin Women's athletics is criminally undercovered at the University of Wisconsin. Obviously, the volleyball team is is enormously popular. Turns out people really well. Uh, The women's soccer team is is very good. Our softball team, very good as well. And no one talks about them very much. Uh, We have done a couple of different interviews. We interviewed uh, Aaron McKinney, the goalie from the women's soccer team. Uh, We just sat down with um, Maddie, Schw- Maddie Schwartz, Katie Keller, and uh, Kayla Conwent of the softball team. Um, really great interview with them. And, um, you know, it, it, this is this is meant to expose people to something maybe they don't often take a look at. But um, for, like, women's hockey and, and women's soccer, there's not a hugely appreciable difference between watching the men's sport and watching the women's sport. So uh, if you get a chance, go out and, and take a look. We have a championship level women's hockey program. We have an NCAA tournament uh, caliber softball team. And we've got a, a women's soccer team that has had tremendous success recently. Uh, we also do talk a lot about recruiting. Uh, and Luke Fickle has, has turned up the heat on us in terms of like covering we we decided to cover the offers that went out and i'm telling you that 30 30 plus offers a week that's a lot of that's a lot of huddle film to watch people yeah was that like a two-hour show of just the offers it was about an hour and 15 minutes because I, I yeah we we kind of had to breeze through some folks because after a little while you've seen one six three 190 pound wide receiver you've seen them all i think that's fair 
And, and everybody listening, go there on YouTube to the Bucky cast, go check them out, subscribe. Cause again, we're all about building up the community on this show and this channel and this community. Um, more voices are better. We're smarter because of it. And again, they, they do, I've watched all their interviews, uh, especially with the, the females our women's Wisconsin sports. And they kind of shed a light on stuff that we don't talk about enough. So Definitely go check them out. Subscribe on YouTube to the Bucky Cast. Um, really good people over there. At least um, watch for the least worst option segment because that is that's putting a fire under somebody to pick like which two unpleasant options they would pick. So go check them out for sure. Go subscribe, um, John. Let's get some comments in here. PT, I see you in the queue. We'll bring you on in one sec. Uh, let's see. Logan Cowich, John, true or false? Says we are winning a national championship confirmed. No. <laughs> You're such a hater. I love it. I, Eric, Tom, Eric Thompson says, already liking the fickle tenure. The moves that he's made have only benefited Wisconsin, in my opinion. John, I want to ask you this because I've heard this, and I don't know if this is what Eric's talking about, but I've heard this opinion um, in another spot. Does the hiring of Luke Fickle and the, the buzz with recruiting, does that have a carryover effect to, in some way, um, lighting a fire under Greg Gard, in some way, shining a light maybe if recruiting doesn't improve there? It certainly isn't helping Greg Gard. Uh, the, there's, there's the uh, the fire guard crowd has gotten a lot louder over the, this losing streak, and the fact that there's a perception that Wisconsin has sort of lost steam again with all of its Plan A targets in the 2024 recruiting class uh, is it, it's going to be really hard for Greg Gard to shake that uh, if he always is considered to be the guy who you know identifies the talent early but can't finish with them when when the pressure's on uh sooner or later that's not gonna that's not gonna pass muster with chris mcintosh and if they miss the ncaa tournament this year his seat goes to warm it's not fair but you know being a being a good coach and make no mistake about it greg guard's a really good coach Mm -hmm. uh it's not enough anymore there's got to be more to it than just you're a nice guy and you're a good coach yeah, I, I do agree with you there. And I'm not, also not, I don't know if you said one way or the other. I'm, I think you kind of did. I'm not in the fire grade guard camp, but his seat, I think you're completely right. His seat's going to get warm if he doesn't make the tournament this year. And I, I don't think they're going to. I mean, I don't want to put you on a spot, but if you had to, if you had to take a guess one way or the other, where would you, where would you lean right now? Or are you just right um, in the middle of this one? Um, unless something drastic changes, uh, as we saw in the last game against Illinois, I mean, they just don't have any offensive firepower. And we've said this on the Bucky cast before, you know, I think there are six, possibly seven power six players on the Badger basketball team. And that's just not good enough. Um, Everything, everyone else is just sort of filler and you can't have that much filler on your bench. Uh, You've got to have, you've got to have at least a decent uh, scholarship big, and right now, Wisconsin, outside of Stephen Crowell and Tyler Wall, does not have that. So, where do you put the blame there? You got to put it on Greg Gard. It's he's in charge of roster construction. You cannot trot out Carter Gilmore for you know fifteen minutes or however many minutes he plays in a game and expect to compete in the Big Ten. It's just not going to happen. So what and, about? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, you're fine. You're fine. I was just going to say, because I agree with you. I, I think at, at the end of the day, the buck stops at the head coach. That's why you make three or $4 million. I don't have a salary right off the top of my head, but that's why you make that type of money. Yeah. Um, there is a, a group that says, well, it's hard to predict a player going pro in three transfers leaving the program. Um, I, I think that's that feels like an excuse to me that doesn't hold water for a head coach at a Big Ten program. But it, it, is there anything there that you say, okay, it's a one-year anomaly, a bunch of transfers. Johnny left. Well, he's going to get next year. I mean, obviously, he's going to get next year. And next year, Wisconsin's bringing in Nolan Winter. They're bringing in Gus Yaldin. These are prospects who are considered to be good players and can contribute off the bench. If they can get good backup minutes and maybe take some of the pressure off of Wall and Crowell, uh, that would really help. Wisconsin also really desperately needs an actual backup point guard. I'm sorry, Kamari McGee. It's just, you're not it at least right now. And Chucky Hepburn is obviously feeling a ton of pressure uh, on the court to, to be the, be the leader and be the distributor. 
and it's really screwed with his game. So, um, you know, this is this is a year of adaptation. You know, you don't have Johnny Davis, you don't have Brad Davison anymore. Wisconsin just needs to uh, figure out what their roles are. And, you know, if we miss the NCAA tournament, we miss the NCAA tournament. There's there's not much you can do about that. Uh, but you'd better come back strong the next year. If they struggle again the season after that, Greg Gard season can get really, really warm, really, really fast. Because that yeah. is one of the two. We, we Paul Crist was not an unsuccessful coach. He's the third winningest coach in, in school history. And he got sent to the garbage heap. And... Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Unceremoniously, he did. Um, yes, and Greg Gard is not immune to that. I don't care how many Big Ten Coach of the Year awards he has, or the fact he's won two Big Ten titles. Well, to be fair, Paul Christ had two Big Ten Coach of the Year awards. I mean, he didn't win the the regular <laughs> he season. Didn't have, he didn't have the he didn't have the titles. He didn't have the titles. Um, I think if he had won one or two Big Ten titles, things might have gone a little differently. But for yeah. Greg Gard, Greg Gard has earned that opportunity to, to make good for the 2024 recruiting class and the 2023-2024 season. But that's probably the limit. That's probably where it's at. Yeah, I'd agree. All right, PT, um, jumping on the show, when you get a second, take your mute off, or your mic off mute. Uh, what, what's going on, PT? What would you want to talk about? I think he's still muted, so we're going to leave him there. Um, if you get your mute or your mic going, buddy, just uh, jump in. Uh I want to talk to you, John, about Paul Chris. I thought so. I did a show about his best moments. Some of the comments were essentially like his best moment was getting fired. Um, some of the comments were along the lines of it's time to move on. And then it was also like the show that nobody watched, nobody talked about. And <laughs> it's just so interesting to me. Um, Christopher Gerber's in here with his favorite Chris moments beating LSU at Lambeau. That was a great atmosphere. I was there for that one. Uh, John, like, why does nobody want to talk about? I get the new fickle hype, but like, there were some great moments with Paul Crest. Uh, recency bias, sure. But um, also, both? <laughs> you know what? A lot of the fan base that is most vocal about how much they hated Paul Crest is the younger fans, and it just wasn't. You know, they they weren't enjoying what what Paul Crest was was trying to sell. Um, and frankly, you know, they, they, they were very, they were very success oriented, uh, program and, you know, there, there just wasn't the equivalent success. So, I mean, I, I get it when I remember being a, a, a 24, 25 year old fan and being like, man, Barry Alvarez is stinking up this joint. You know, I don't care about this. I don't care about the Rose Bowls. Look at us now. This is right. the early two two thousands when you know Wisconsin was going through a rough patch, but you know it it sort of you lack perspective in the moment, and I've seen the same comments. You know, oh my God, Luke Fickle's blowing this previous staff out of the water. And I'm, you know what, the guys he's landed so far in his the twenty twenty four recruiting class, all of those guys are being recruited by the previous coaching staff, and we're all really high on Wisconsin when. They were being recruited. Now they've said, you know, there's a lot more energy. There's, it's a lot more exciting, but this is still, he's building on work that was done by the previous staff. And so I, you know, people have to remember something. Paul Chris wasn't just sitting there uh, drunk in a chair for the last three years he was there. He was trying to figure out what, what he could do to fix it within his parameters. The problem was he just couldn't get it done. And that does not negate, all of the great moments that happened in the years prior to, to 2020, which was when everything started to tip downhill. Yeah, um, I mean, that's well said. I mean, certainly I, or Grant Steck were, were high on that, that Paul Chris staff. I, I got to be honest. I don't think there's any way they land a four-star quarterback out of Texas, uh, even, no matter how much they were on them. I, I we it's, it's a, it's a maybe now we will never know. We'll never know. It's a fair point. All right, we got to take one more quick break. Then we're getting into some of your comments and continue talking about like some of your favorite moments of the Paul Christ era. There are really good ones. Uh, Christopher Gerber's got a couple. We got more in the comments. I'm going to ask uh, John, John for his specific ones as well. We're going to get into that next on Locked On Badgers. But first, a quick break for our friends of the show. All right, we're coming back in. Thank you, 
everybody for tuning in the show. Really, really do appreciate y'all. You are the best part of this community and why we're really building it. Uh, we're going to bring John back on, my old buddy from the Bucky cast, whose name I never, never pronounce correctly. It, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Like, I don't try to do it. I just like in my brain a certain way. Um, so, John, give me your maybe top two or three moments from the Paul Chris Terrier, whether it's a favorite player that he recruited, a game, a moment, um, a performance, whatever it may be. Uh, boy, there, there are a few. I, obviously, that the Orange Bowl against um, Miami – was uh was was tremendous um uh, i'm i'm seeing the comments right <laughs> I want, I want the good ones and the bad ones up i get i get ones that disagree with me all the time too so don't think that as a <laughs> anyway, I, agree with tyler, though. I didn't mean to lose my train of thought no, there. So really quick for the people uh, on the podcast because not everyone can see this tyler strebert comes on and says john come on man nobody in their right mind think we're getting uh mabry with chris as coach i agree with tyler on this one john just for the record but go ahead. We'll never find out. We'll never know. Um, the the Orange Bowl obviously was was the best. You know, turnover chain, my bleed to be bleep, uh, is is always going to be like one of the iconic moments in Wisconsin football history for this century. Um, it, it really can't be topped as a moment. Um, people, I you know last last year when they beat um, Arizona State, I think it was Arizona State in the Las Vegas Bowl. Um, those games where Paul Christ's offense did exactly what Paul Christ wanted it to do, and that is just grind down teams uh, and make them feel helpless and hopeless because they couldn't stop simple running plays. Uh, that same season against Purdue, I was at that game. Wisconsin just ground the soul right out of Purdue. Uh, they just pounded on him and pounded on him. That was a good Purdue defense that had George Karloftis had a number of other um, NFL caliber players and they just beat the snot out of them in the second half. Uh, there were the, the 2019 uh, game that cinched up the big 10 West in the snow oh, against Minnesota, which I missed most of because I was in a movie theater watching frozen two mm. with my nieces. Uh, that was a great that, game. That I, I, when I rewatched that, uh, that was, that was a tremendous that was a tremendous game. Um, Wisconsin fans don't really remember that part. They don't remember the Minnesota game in 2020, which I loved because Jack Dunn literally won Paul Bunyan's axe for us. He and Garrett Groshek, wow. as much yeah. as people hated Jack Dunn uh, for whatever reason, because he wasn't good enough, I guess. Well, I mean, but, we know the reasons, but it wasn't. Be it was nothing Jack Dunn did wrong, right? No. And in that game, he he basically saved Wisconsin's bacon. I think he was their only healthy wide receiver. Mm -hmm. So uh, those those are the sorts of things, the little things that really stand out to me is, you know, make it getting Wisconsin to win that many games in his initial season when all he had was was, you know, a, a flotsam and jetsam at running back. Uh, a, a bad offensive line, really young offensive line. Yeah, um, it's and, you know, that it's just, it, it's one of those things where I look back and I'm like, there was so much promise there. So much promise, especially around 2019 when those good recruiting classes started rolling in and they just won the Big Ten West title. They had just punched. That's another great moment. The first half of that 2019 Big Ten title game when they absolutely punched Ohio State in the oh, face. I know. Yeah, and then lost Chris Orr right before half, and the defense was never the same after that. And the offense did nothing either. In the yeah, second. the offense didn't do anything either. Um, Anthony Lottie had to maintain tradition and drop a punt. That name but, is never – John, you were the first person to bring that name onto the Locked On Badgers podcast. Thank you. <laughs> you broke the uh, deal on Anthony Lottie. Uh, let's get some will never be broken. You. So Brett McDonald echoes your first one. He turned over chain my F and A. I can't – this is a family show. Probably Pete Caramel <laughs> for me. Uh, another one that you mentioned, this is from Tanner Plays Guitar Heroes. My favorite moment was when we went into Minneapolis 2019, crushed a top 10 Minnesota team to reclaim our axe. People forget that was that Minnesota team was eighth in the college football playoff rankings. Like we, yep. that was a good Minnesota team. One and eleven we, games. We murdered them. By the way, it's funny. I made a comment. Um, that's the one where PJ Fleck put the co Big Ten West division champs on their ring, right? You know that that game caused that. We'll somehow. we'll get we'll get years and years of mileage out of that one. It's so much fun, man. So much fun. Um, Commandant Clink says favorite moments. All I can say it wasn't. 
it wasn't watching his offense run a two minute drill. Oh, that was, yeah, that wasn't his favorite moment. The no. commandant chimes in. No. That is very true. Uh, Key Kev G says the 2016 LSU opener was his best coaching season. Wisconsin legit was projected to have six wins, miss bowl game, um, beat Michigan, smoke. You remember that Michigan State game? Michigan State was highly ranked. They smoked them. I think it was 30 to six, um, won 10 uh, games that year. 2019 was probably my favorite when they took a Michigan State team that had a really good defense. It just absolutely keel all them. I mean, I believe that game ended in a shutout. Uh, they just they just blew the doors right yeah. off of Michigan State. Did I thought Michigan State scored right at the end? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe they did. Maybe they did. But by that point, I think our third string was in, so it really didn't. Yeah, matter. yeah. There was a lot of good ones, man. Um, is there a, is there a particular player that best per, per, maybe I mean take maybe Jonathan Taylor out of it, but a player yeah. that best personifies the, the Chris era for you? Um, I think there are a couple. Uh, I can't, I can't narrow it down to just one TJ Watt. Um, I realize he's a defensive player, but still that was, that was a guy who was part of the, that early Chris era. Uh, another one of my, um, <laughs> one of my favorite uh, Wisconsin had plenty of meathead quarterbacks. Yeah, uh, yeah. Joel, Joel Stave was my favorite though, in terms of like, or I shouldn't say my favorite Mike Samuel will always have a, a place in my heart. But Joel Stave just was, you know, they kept throwing him out here, out there. And Joel Stave kept getting hurt and getting knocked around and still, you know, wound up one of the top quarterbacks and wins at Wisconsin of all time. We should, I'm going to do, listen, John, I love Joel Stave because for so many reasons, <laughs> I know you do. I'm going to do a Joel Stave show because think about his like career arc. This is a quarterback who's a walk on, won a, amazing amount of games at Wisconsin in the middle of this, he developed the yips. He was like Chuck Knobloch. He couldn't suddenly throw the ball. He had to deal with Gary Anderson, putting Tanner McAvoy in front of him. Um, like he could also play the piano and had these weird YouTube videos where he was singing on this. Like I could do a whole show on Stave. I love Stave. Um, Hooger says Fumagalli. That's a great Paul Christ type yeah. of a guy. Um, you know, so yeah, I think we, we wrap up here. We're at about 30 minutes. Um, very interesting just to me again i i'm i'm crazy excited about luke fickle i and john i know you're in more of a wait and see approach which is also totally pragmatic and fine um oh i'm still i'm still excited about him by the way I mean, think about it but i'm not going to go over the top in terms of saying uh you know like oh my god he's the best coach at wisconsin ever until he wins some freaking games well i think so i'm not there obviously but i do think like some of the the where you're saying you don't know if Paul Chris would have gotten a four star quarterback. I'm saying I think that book had been closed and shut, and Fickle has gotten like three of them. Um, but there's a certainly well, no Fickle has gotten three of them. Phil Longo's gotten them. Oh, who got Longo? Well, Luke Fickle, but you know, potato, potato. Um, well, I think if we make the argument though, where we said the the buck stops with Greg Gard, right, in building the roster, isn't the same argument the buck stops with Luke Fickle in building a roster? I think you're comparing apples to oranges, but let's not get into that discussion because that's a whole yep. other podcast entirely. It 100% is. Uh, Commandant Clink says, by the way, John, get on the bandwagon. Let's go. Don't, <laughs> don't be such a – no, I love it. Um, by the way, Hooger – how would you pronounce this name? Hooger says, holy crap, you got my name right. Oh, I thought he said, holy crap, you got my name wrong. Sorry, I got it right. Hooger. Okay, nailed it. Yeah, um, I, I was going to say, I don't think I can pronounce that any differently. Oh, Zach Bartz chimed in. He said, yep, it was 38 nothing Wisconsin-Michigan State that year. So, John, you nailed that one. Um, Derek says Fick, Lo, Fickle got those quarterbacks, and that's facts. I agree, Derek. I agree. But I'll say this, um, and you're totally right, John. We don't know, right? We I, Nobody's a crystal ball. We're, we're never going to know. We're, we're never going to so know. A lot of, the, a lot of the comparisons of Paul Chris would have never gotten that guy. Well, well Paul Chris isn't here anymore. I, I will say people, so. I'll say that I'll say in conclusion, people need to turn the page. Okay. Yes, I agree there. It's it's done. And you see it on message boards all the time. People are still beating up on Paul Chris. It's like Paul Chris is an alumni. Paul Chris poured his heart and soul into everything he did. And he just it he he wasn't in sync with the times anymore. So people yeah. just have to you have to turn the page now. It's a different era. Stop looking backwards and saying, Oh my god, compared to Paul Chris, Luke Fickle. It doesn't matter what Paul Christ was. Focus on what Fickle is. 
Yeah. And that's that's my concluding remark. No, I think that's perfectly said. I think that's I'm 100%. drop my mic now. Uh, Stingray says PC, and I think this is kind of talking about similar similar stance what you had. He said PC was great. The recent recruiting says says maybe overshadowed it. You can sense the energy for the future. Like both those things can be true. Like PC was great. We won a lot of games. We were never bad. Uh, but the, this success just is driving a, a wave of momentum. John, um, thank you so much for tuning in. A uh, bunch of comments I didn't get to here. Oh, let's finish on here. Ryan Robbins says, I'm just joining in. Um, Jamel Howard announcing potentially to the Badgers tomorrow. You've talked about Jamel Howard. I've talked about Jamel Howard. Um, I think that's a huge potential get, John. Any thoughts on Jamel Howard to kind of wrap up the show? He's a big man. Uh, prototypical nose tackle. And, you know, LSU and Miami were, were in there at the end. We'll see if Wisconsin gets him. Um, all indications are that they will, which is kind of a shocker. But that's another credit to uh, Luke Fickle to get back in there and, and drag, drag another prospect who wanted to go and bring him back. You know, that's a number of players that he has gone out and said, no, look, Wisconsin still wants you. We still want you. Look how bright the future is. Yeah. Well said again. Um, we're going to wrap up there, y'all. Coming up, I think, tomorrow, we have a John Garcia interview that's going to drop talking about the new tight end recruits. The next day, Jason Jordan talking about uh, Con Knipple, uh, K, K, K Rogers, um, and McDermott. And then the next day, we're talking great guard. John, we're doing a big great guard show about how we should or, or not should or should not get fired. That'll be a fun one, huh? Uh, if it's if it's going to be open to the public, um, that's going to be a crazy show. Well, listen, I, you and I are on the same boat with this one in terms of Greg Gard. Like he should not get fired. Um, so it, that's where I'm at. But we'll, we're going to talk about that one on Thursday, y'all. So if you're in the live chat now, tune into that one. John, one more time, where can they find what you're doing with the Bucky Cast? Where can they follow you? Uh, just go out to Twitter. It's at the Bucky Cast. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. Otherwise, you can send us an email. We still love to get emails, even though we haven't gotten any in a while. It's uh, the Bucky Cast 43 at gmail.com. That's it, everybody on Wisconsin. Um, comment on Clink with the last comment of the show. If we get Howard, I will be over the moon. That's that's right, sir. Caught the commandant weighing in um, on Wisconsin. Appreciate everybody. We'll talk again tomorrow. Peace out, people.